Let's talk about the Clare You, which is one of my favorite kinds of poems. And we'll talk about how you can write a Clare You and then some features to watch out for. So I've written a ton of Clare You's over the years, it's sort of a hobby of mine. And they're fairly easy to write, at least on the surface, but the real trick is to make a Clare You witty and clever and good enough that somebody might actually find it funny. So what is a Clare You? Well, first of all, it was invented not too long ago. It was invented by Edmund Clare You Bentley. <laughs> Edmund Clare You Bentley. So it's named after his middle name. And he first invented this when he was about 16. So that would have been around 1891. He was in a science class and he was really bored and he decided to write a poem. Um, he first published his first volume of Clare Hughes in 1905, and then they became quickly quite popular. I think these days they, they have sort of diminished in popularity again, but occasionally occasionally you'll see publications run, let's say, a Clare U competition. Um, and I'm really hopeful that maybe over time people will rediscover the Clare U and start writing them again. In terms of um, the, the sort of age-appropriate level of a Clare U, I think it's it's probably best to, to write Clare U's when you're in high school, let's say, as opposed to elementary school. Or if you are writing them in, in elementary school, then you may be better off writing them about family members, let's say, uh, or people you know, rather than necessarily historical figures. Now, the, the main two features of a Clare U are that they're always about somebody, Okay, usually somebody famous, and that person is typically named at the end of the first line. So you can have a few words before the name, uh, but usually we, we start fairly quickly with the name. Then we have a rhyme scheme that goes A, A, B, B, and that's really kind of the nuts and bolts of Clare use. That's really all there is to it. And then it's up to you to try to make, make it witty or, or funny. Um, the lines can be as long as you want them to be, so that's no no uh, trouble. Um, the other thing is that there's no set rhythm, although you may still want to think about rhythm because if it's really awkward, it's it's not going to flow off the tongue. And a clear you can be biographical, so it can be historical and true, but it can also be completely made up and nonsensical. Uh, so it's up to you, and, and I think there's sort of a uh, a great sense of leeway in, in how much you can concoct about historical people. Now, if you do make up some historical detail that you know did not necessarily happen, it does have to fit the character. In other words, a totally random detail about a historical person is not going to make people laugh. It has to sort of bring out who this person is. So in our first example then, uh, and all, all of these are ones that I've written, um, in our first example, then, we have Rosa Parks, who is famous for sitting in her seat on the bus uh, and, and sort of being part of the civil rights movement. And uh, she refused to give up her seat, and she was protesting um, segregation. So this sort of talks about her maybe being in elementary school and getting high marks for staying in her seat. Uh, and then that's, in a sense, ironic, right, because... Uh, eventually, she would not get high marks for doing so. Okay, the next one's about a painter named, named Piet Mondrian. And he was a famous Dutch painter, very abstract kind of art. So this one goes, Piet Mondrian was not a ladies' ma man. Oh, Piet Mondrian, I should say, was not a ladies' man. He got on their nerves since he couldn't draw curves. And a lot of these, you can see, are, are a little bit more for adults as well. Uh, they often have some sexual jokes in them. Um, I, I've tried not to have too many of those in the examples here, but that is often a feature um, of the Clare U. The next one here suggests something that um, you can focus on as well, and that's unusual rhymes. So this one goes Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, or Nero to the rest of us, needed room for his new home, so he burned down most of Rome. And you can see that Germanicus is really hard to rhyme with, and so we've tried to sort of rhyme something with it. Um, that's, you know, it, it seems a bit awkward, but actually that's a feature of the Clare U, that we're looking often for interesting and unusual rhymes. So don't go for the most obvious thing. The next one is another sort of minor variation, because this one has two people's names in the Clare U. 
and this one has a sort of contrast. Notice also that we didn't finish our first line with the name, but we have switched it around. You are, in other words, occasionally allowed to break the rules, but you have to be very careful when you do that, and it, it should be for a good purpose, or it should actually make the clear you better uh, and not worse. This one then reads, Chamberlain waved the sign for peace in our time, but Churchill muttered, what the devil, you're a sissy, Neville. And the last two lines show another feature, which is that often there are quoted uh, words in a clair you. So dialogue, uh, people saying things. And they, don't, they can be made up things again, right? Uh, but people's speech is often meant to characterize what they are like. So try to in, in, include a quotation or something that, that somebody says. Uh, and that makes it quite funny often. And then we'll finish with one last one here. And this one is just sort of to link back to the limerick form about, about which uh, we had a, a little video as well. And this one goes, there once was a man named Edward Lear who invented the, the limerick, right, which is five lines long, who lived with a terrible fear they would write on his tomb a clare you just to save room. All right. So try your hand at a clare you. Hopefully you enjoy it, and hopefully other people do too.